Cisco Stealth Watch Cloud. All right, today we're gonna to do a portal overview. So Stealth Watch Cloud allows us to protect both cloud assets and the private network, right? We wanna improve security and instant response across that entire environment. Um, so this includes the office all the way up to the public cloud. The idea here is that we wanna detect threats in real time and obviously reduce those false positives and ultimately gain actionable security intelligence to make our security teams more efficient. Now you can see here that I've kind of broken up the Stealth Cloud features, automatic configuration, threat detection, valuable alerts, we've got regulatory compliance, and we've got easy management and scalability. So regulatory compliance, for example, could be things like PCI. So when we look at deployment, you can do public cloud monitoring and or private network monitoring. So it's very easy to deploy. Um, and so let's get started. Let's get into that dashboard and have a look around. So from the dashboard screen, you can see there's a couple of uh, pivots from dashboard itself. Um, you're gonna see that right here. Yeah, so, and when I click on dashboard, it brings me to this opening page. I can see all the open alerts. I can also see, um, uh, you know, most relevant alerts at this or most recent alerts. I can see endpoints and kind of what's taking place there. I can see traffic patterns. Uh, I can also look at the sources themselves. So I, again, very simple and clean interface to allow us to very quickly make a decision on what we might want to look at. Um, pivot to an alert if, if we want to right from the screen. Again, nice and clean and simple. So let's just go back up and look at alerts themselves. So with alerts, um, these are uh, triggered by observations, and we're gonna talk about that in a second, but one or more observations may trigger an alert. From the screen there, we saw all the open alerts. What I did was I changed it to all so I can see things that maybe even closed, right? I, I wanna get a good look at everything that might have taken place. Now, tags are a really handy capability, right? You can come in, you can tag some of these alerts that you see so you can reference them uh, later on um, and it helps when you're looking for something very specific. You can see assignees and then you can also sort. Now observations, so observations are the building blocks of those alerts, right? An observation is simply a fact about traffic that was recorded and then ultimately they may uh, trigger an alert. So you can see here when we look at observations themselves, you can see that um, you know we've got persistent external server observation, we see a heartbeat observation, and the list will go on, right? So we'll scroll down here. You can see some of the geolocation information that's showing up, right? So you can see the timeline, the source IP, the destination, ports. Again, quick visuals and I can pivot from here if I want to, right? If I need to look at something specific, you can see SSH client going to China, that might be interesting. I can then pivot to Talos or Cisco Umbrella and do additional analysis on that IP. So pretty easy. Um, so let's go to models and let's look at roles. So roles are to identify the type of devices on the network. So you can see this displays a mix of typical LAN devices such as DNS, database servers, domain controllers, as well as you can see there's a lot of AWS instances here, or roles, I should say. So going back to alerts, if we wanted to start investigating alert, it's as simple as just clicking the alert itself. And you can see an internal connection to a blacklist hit. Now, again, you, you see a summary of data here. You can see source IP, destination IP. Um, again, I could search that particular host uh, right from there. Copy, paste, right? And I can do a search and uh, do some analysis on that particular uh, asset. And in this case, you can see that um, I can see the traffic pattern uh, for that particular asset. Um, I, and I can uh, do additional analysis, look at connected IPs as well, right? You can see top ports. 
You can see the amount of traffic, right? So that could be a concern depending on uh, what uh, connected IP uh, it is, right? And the location. So pretty easy, right? I'm, I'm uh, very quick analysis on that specific host. And this could be enough for me to take that information and start actioning at this point in time, right? I could see a large volume of traffic going to a specific host that's not part of a geo that I do business with uh, and that might be using protocols that I'm suspect of. So here we can look at the history, right? Broken out and here we've got, you know, an overall summary, top internal connections, external traffic, internal roles, uh, profiles that align, DNS names, right? Traffic, again, I can look at um, the uh, traffic summary for uh, that asset. You can see down here, I can look at it from an internal to external perspective if I wanted to. Again, if uh, this is a server uh, that doesn't do much uh, data sending, right? Um, and I'm seeing large volumes of traffic going externally, uh, I might be very concerned about that, right? Especially maybe if it's going over port 22, for example. Profiling, so this is how it, we're looking at the entity itself and we're profiling it. You can see a large uh, portion of that is tied to web. DNS, so we can get some insight into DNS itself. Uh, here I don't have anything, but I think you get the idea. So pretty cool, right? We learn a lot. Again, this is a cloud asset, right? That we're looking at potentially things like in AWS, we're taking the VPC logs, very similar to NetFlow, and we're ingesting that and we're making sense of it, right? Running this behavioral analytics across it. So very quickly here, I could uh, look at alert types. Um, so I, just to get an idea of what alert types exist, um, I may want to change the alert types themselves. So you can see them all here. There's a, a comprehensive list of them. And you can see it highlights the red and the orange to let you know the priority of that particular alert. I could also come in here and modify these if I choose to. So if I want to change uh, one of these to maybe a normal or a low priority, I have the ability to do that. Again, fairly simple, right? The interface is not complicated. It's not overwhelming. It's to the point, right? It's got the, these capabilities that it looks for observations. Once those observations hit a threshold that trigger an alert, I get a quick summary and I'm, I'm already looking at something that um, is suspect, right? I've, I've already got something that uh, is showing indications of, of potential compromise or suspect traffic a, as a whole. So we're going to go back to alerts and let's look at a couple of these. So one might be uh, interesting, ex excessive access attempts, right? Um, in this one, we uh, grab this asset, we get, learn a little bit about the description of that asset, um, you know, updated, created. I have the ability to assign somebody to that um, uh, incident. I can close the alert itself. And then you can see the supporting observations, right? So multiple access failures uh, were, was the observation. You can see it's on port 22. The connected IP address is, it happens to be China. Uh, again, I can then pivot right into Umbrella to do analysis uh, of that IP. Again, if I have Umbrella. If not, I might go to Talos Intelligence, which is uh, free for you to do the analysis with. So pretty cool, right? Um, and then I could take that information, right? So this is more of the active defense. I'm doing the analysis and I'm learning more about it. I might be getting additional IP addresses or domains or URLs during my investigation that I feed into my passive defenses like firewalls and email security, content you know, security, your endpoint. Could be an IP address that you might, might want to blacklist. Um, but the idea here is that you, you're facilitating that. You're, you're looking for what normal is in the environment and then in any deviations from what normal is, we're gonna trigger an alert. Now there, there might be things that are specific to um, uh, 
uh, a security incident itself, right? Uh, perhaps communicating with an asset that's uh, a known CNC. Here's another one, excessive access to men, uh, attempts. But this one is interesting because now you can see a large number of attempts um, coming in from the same IP address, right? Uh, there's a couple there, but you can see that um, definitely the timeline of the attempts of logging in. Uh, from there, uh, you might want to pivot to see additional observations for that host. So what else did that host see, right? So multiple access failure, sure. Oh, port scanner, that's interesting, right? Uh, and then you can see that you could drill into there's multiple pages of those specific observations. There might be one, there might be, you know, 10 observations uh, within that asset itself. So again, I can pivot into each one of these as I uh, deem uh, required, right? If I, for my analysis overall. Okay. Um, also, we can search, right? So, and I think I showed that earlier and I didn't call it out, but um, here we're looking at uh, DNS abuse and we can see that we have one alert that has triggered um, and we can do uh, analysis on this. And what's interesting with this one is, is that um, we're seeing a large number of packets, like the packet size itself, going through DNS. So this could be something around, um, you know, tunneling uh, through DNS. You can see some additional observations like we shown in the earlier uh, portion of this. You can see comments that were made by people that were doing the analysis on, on uh, that particular asset or entity. And, uh, and that's pretty much it, right? You can assign an individual, they do the analysis, they come in and close the alert, make some additional comments so, so someone knows exactly what actions may have taken. But a pretty cool technology, very simple deploy. Cloud is your friend in this case. Um, again, if you don't know what's happening on the network, then you better hope all your security technologies can pick up every single thing that happens. And we know that doesn't happen for any technologies that exist today. So knowing what normal is is important.